Hi, welcome to this channel on magnetic energy, technology, principles, and applications. This video is about magnetic energy and uh, continuous rotation, continuous motion. And uh, you know what? I, I'll just tell you real quick. This is, <laughs> if you haven't seen any of these videos, I, I bumble through these videos partly because I'm so busy trying to save the world that uh, I don't really have the time to to produce these like professionally or anything. So. Please bear with me on that. Uh, this has been, this topic of this video has, I've gotten a lot of requests for this type of topic, and so I'm gonna do my best to do this. Now, obviously, I am not going to show you a running unit in this video, but I will describe your running unit, and therefore, I avoid any threats to national security. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm within the rules, <laughs> so let's just be clear. There's a lot of videos out there that show like magnet motors and motors and, and jigs and certain things that, that show magnets spinning in a rotor on repel. And I, I give props to those guys and the people that have done that because a lot of thought goes into those. They, they do some excellent engineering, they're very precise, and so there's a lot of cool things about that. In this, those do not really fit in this particular model of magnetic energy. Uh, we are, so that would be in this model that using repel to spin a rotor would be a very inefficient use of magnetic energy. And it is barely, barely scratching the surface of the capability of magnetic energy. So we are looking, this is more of an etheric model of the universe and the energy is more ionic. So we think about more like attract, attract principles and principles that lead to magnetic neutral pulsing and anti-gravity and and a whole bunch of other things that, that really could change the world and end scarcity for all humankind, a scarcity on every level. So this particular video, I just want to talk about a couple principles in a unit that is relatively inexpensive and relatively simple to build and design. And if you've read our websites, then of course you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then don't worry about it because I'm just going to try to briefly explain it right now if I can do that in this short video. So as you see right here, I just have a normal magnet. This is a ceramic magnet, but you could use like neodymium or something. Uh, that's fine. Now here, what I have right here, if I can get that on camera, these are plastic magnets. And so they're, they're really like the industrial version of a refrigerator magnet, okay? And I have them stacked right now. Now these are polarized on one side, and I'm gonna use mostly conventional terminology in this video to make it easier to understand. So they'll be polarized like north and south on the flat sides of these. So this is pretty interesting though, because when you stack these like this, and then you put them up to a face of a magnet, they, they want to pull to the very last magnet in the stack of the plastic magnets. So they would go like that. Now, if you imagine let's say 12 to 24 or even more, we've had even more. But if you imagine these in a rotor, okay, and the rotor could be like some dielectric, it, it, it could just be plastic, it could be acrylic, it can be something, but something that's not too light because the inertia and the momentum of the rotor is actually productive in this particular configuration. So if you imagine this, the, the row of plastic magnets, it's always gonna to wanna to move to the very edge, okay? And that's because it's just, it's basically transferring the attract to this all the way to the edge of this magnet. Now, if this particular face of this magnet, imagine you could just say this is north, okay? So there's a row of these above the plastic magnets and then there's a row of them below the plastic magnets. And this space would also be north, okay? And you could say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going repel, repel, just like anybody else. But here's the difference, though. Because we are moving the plastic magnets between the rows of magnets, as this 
this is free movement okay so you got to imagine like in your group of 12 to 24 to 36 or whatever it is that's in the rotor this group of plastic magnets a certain percentage of these at any moment at any given moment and the revolutions this could be like 300 600 to 900 rpms or even higher kind of depending on what your rotor size is and and what's going on but this motion as this approaches the magnets it, it, it there's a, an attract that gets it all the way to that leading edge okay and then we'll talk about how we break the magnetic hold back but as soon as you get to that point all of that distance right there up to that point that's free that's like what would you call a free power or free rotation now this we categorize this type of unit in like a toy category okay this doesn't have a lot of torque uh, this isn't in fact we don't even really consider it that useful we're not generating neutral magnetic current with this okay we're, we are this is just simply a demonstration of the attract release principle that has a continuous spinning of a rotor but it really falls more into the category of a toy and I know a lot of these these kind of inventors or people they put these videos out there with a repel magnet but they also have most of them have almost no torque whatsoever and they'll say wow this is a way to you know revolutionize the world and and they'll they'll light like a little led light bulb or something with it you know and so it's like it's cute and it's cool and and i and i'm not dismissing it okay because there's there's some excellent engineering that goes into that but when you compare that to like like our magnogen engine that has 480 horsepower and it literally can drive buses and planes and boats and cars and everything I mean that's a revolutionary engine that is on magnetic energy so when we get into like all of the idea of paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials and stuff and how we're using those in the real in the other units this unit is not doing that this is just a simple way this is these are like little tricks to use to get continuous rotation and plastic magnets offer a great way to do this if you want to use attract attract and attract release so imagine this is approaching this magnet on the upper row okay and it's moving right at that same time on the bottom row you have another magnet that attracts the lead edge of that and moves it to that magnet and then the next on the top row moves it and then the bottom row moves it and so on so you can kind of see as you if you have magnets above and below it these these magnets will will keep switching their attract to the next magnet in line now in order to combat magnetic holdback and things like that if you want to call it that we start to incorporate like some diamagnetic materials so like for example on the back side of the stack of plastic magnets you might have brass uh, now brass will be diamagnetic at room temperature I'm assuming that anybody that does this isn't going to be going radical with their temperature fluctuations so but just assume like you could use brass you could use copper so you could use like uh, like a sheet of copper on this or you could use brass we've even had wings like brass wings or copper wings so that it's diamagnetic so what it does is it assists just a little bit it assists in a push away from that magnet to help with that hold back now the front we kind of typically you may have something up there but we kind of want that to be full attract power so as it approaches the next magnet it fully attracts to it now now with the magnet field itself okay with the permanent magnet field not the plastic but with the permanent magnet fields that are stationary we definitely need to do some work with their fields like we want some level of containment now a normal like uh, one of our normal processes for that like in a unit we might do something like um, so if you can kind of see into this rotor and I'll bring this up like this so we might wrap them in mylar and then have copper coated steel wire around them and then have mica and so we'll have these different features now that help contain the field and make it more of an ortho orthogonal type of field that juts out from the magnet and doesn't bloom out because we really don't want it blooming out because that's counterproductive and it contributes to the magnetic holdback 
So, so what we want to do is have something, and so like in mylar is like you know it's kind of like in the aluminum family, and that helps shield the magnet a little bit. But then you can also use like copper, and and one of the reasons why we will often do like copper coated steel wire around the magnets and then we connect the copper coated steel wire on the certain polarities so we might go like north to north or south to south on the magnet polarities is because it kind of spreads it helps distribute the field through the magnets it helps contain it and then the copper coating kind of adds that diamagnetic effect to it and plastic magnets are not very strong I mean they're they're relatively weak so it's the strength of the magnet itself that really is providing the rotation because they're attracted more to the magnet so like uh, so for example the plastic magnets won't they're not too attracted to copper coated steel wire because they're they're so weak but when it comes to a magnet then there's actually a fairly significant amount of a track between them so and you can think about think about it like this the the lead edge of the permanent magnet you don't necessarily want to inhibit that very much because you want you know full attract coming in here you can kind of and and that's something you can experiment with on your own it depends on how you're containing it but the tail edge, you want that grip to let go, like you want it to let go, and that's where you can have like a diamagnetic, or like you can be redistributing, we call it redistributing the magnetic fields with copper coated steel wire that's connected to each magnet, and that helps redistribute those fields, and it, and it lessens the magnetic holdback. Now, the momentum of the rotor that these are on contributes to this well as well so there's a little bit of weight to the rotor and it has forward momentum and so all of those little factors contribute to this quite easily breaking the magnetic holdback and then attracting to the next magnet on the other ring of magnets so that's there's a little bit of I'm just trying to give you an idea of some of the dynamics of this without showing a running unit but that way, if you want to experiment with this and you want to make a, a unit that has continuous rotation, follow these ideas, these like principles that I'm talking about, and then that will help you get to that level. And, and all you're doing is essentially you're, you're proving, like we've proven, is you're just approving, you're proving an attract-release phenomenon. We call it the attract-release mechanism and so that's you're getting it attract but at the same time you get a release now at the other thing that you can consider with this is the magnets themselves and we've done this as far as like especially if you're using like neodymium or something you can have the magnets be tapered off okay so like the front edge is a a little thicker and then the tail edge it like tapers off so that there's less magnetic face on the tail edge so that the holdback is even less um, and so that you know like if you're thinking like a trapezoidal or something like a magnet that has less <laughs> less magnetic hold on the on the, the release side of the magnet based on the shape of the magnet so that's another trick that you can do and so these are just different like little tricks to do this and I hope that kind of gives an idea of just a way for you to have continuous rotation. People are going to call it like perpetual motion or over unity, but we, I don't really, we don't really buy into those terms. Uh, it's, there's, there's an equal amount of input and output and the, and it's, the magnets are contributing to the input. So, I mean, there's no magic involved in this. It's not, it's not over unity and it certainly isn't perpetual motion. Uh, at least in our model, in the magnetic energy model, because it's not a closed system. So like in the classic definition of perpetual motion, you would need a closed system. 
and then something continuously spinning and and our whole the whole model is in this magnetic energy model is that everything is an open system especially magnets but everything else and so it's a it's a very open system there's a very measurable input and output with it and there's no magic happening it's just this is just a simple way these are like tricks that you can do to help with continuous rotation so with that said uh, i hope that wasn't too boring of a video <laughs> I mean, it wasn't as fun as the Men in Black video, but <laughs> if you like the video, please hit like. If you know anyone that's into this kind of stuff, please let them know and so they can subscribe. And, and then always, always submit questions. I appreciate that, and I thank you guys so much for communication on this topic and for, for maybe believing in this to some degree that there is a better way of running the world. There's a better model for us to be following in the universe and and free energy and magnetic energy and everything is very real uh so with that i will see you next time